Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you dwelling in your secret place this season? Are you still dwelling in your secret place? He who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. Somebody look at somebody and say, I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. In him will I trust. I'm going to trust him. Give God a hand clap. Say hallelujah this morning. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As the praise and worship team, about three different family members, three different groups of people who are making their way in here, will go on as Mark continues to play that song. We used to sing a song, and it kind of sounds like this, but the melody is different. And this is the wrong season to be singing about the dew in the morning, isn't it? <laughs> This is the wrong season, but God's season, His Holy Ghost is, is, is here for us in every day of our life. So, if we can say, like the dew in the morning, like the dew in the morning, like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Hallelujah, as we prepare our hearts for the prayer in scripture. Like the dew, like the dew in the morning. Hallelujah. Like the snow in the morning. Gently rest. Hallelujah. Gently rest upon my heart. Just do it like that as we warm our spirits up for prayer. Like the dew in the morning. Y'all might just repeat after me. Like the dew, like the dew in the morning. Like the dew in the morning. I like it. Like, like the dew.
Amen. We're going to pray at this time. And I want to encourage you to pray because no one can talk to God about the things that you're concerned about like you can. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory for all that you have done for us, God, from the day we were born until this very hour. God, we thank you for calling us out of our darkness into your marvelous light. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God for the faith that you have given us. For you are the author and you are also the finisher of our faith. And Lord God, we just thank you for a mind to come out to the house of worship this morning. Glory to God. A mind that want to come out and praise your holy name. Glory to God. And Lord, we come out to seek the word of God. So give us an ear, Lord God, to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we have brought our petitions before your throne this morning. You said we could come boldly before your throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Lord, we are here today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You said if we seek you early, we're going to find you. So God, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. It didn't matter, Lord God, what, what the weather did last night or what the weather's doing this morning. God, our heart's desire was to be in the house of the Lord this day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but you said your word is going to stand forever. Glory to God, we're standing on your word today. Bless your holy name. And Lord God, we continue to pray for our bishop. We pray for our pastor and first lady. We pray, Lord God, for the ministry here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. We pray for all of the saints of God this morning. And oh God, if any visitors, Lord God, we pray your blessing upon them. And God, we know that it was you who purposed for us all to be here today. And it was you, God, who planned the word of God. So, Lord, give us an ear to hear what the word of God has to say today. Hallelujah. And God, we know that you're able to break yokes and undo heavy burdens and let the captives go free. Let somebody find liberty today, Lord God, like never before. Set somebody free, God, for you declared he whom the Son set free as free indeed. God, we thank you for all that you have done in Jesus' name. And, oh, God, we pray for those who need an understanding about the baptism in water in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who need an understanding about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be born again. Hallelujah. And God, in the name of Jesus, bless our musicians, our praise and worship team, Lord God. Uh, bless God with an anointing this morning like never before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody came with a heavy heart. Somebody came with a broken spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody came looking for hope. Glory to God. And oh God, they came to the house of the Lord. Glory to God. And God, we know that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And God, we thank you for what you're getting ready to do. We welcome you into this place. We welcome you into our hearts. And God, we pray that you have your way in this service.
thank God for you. At this time, we're going to receive our morning offering and tithing. Glory to God. As God has blessed you and your house, amen, we're going to, amen, be a blessing to our God. He said, bring your tithes and your offering into his storehouse that they might be made for his people. And see, when I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings where there is not enough room to receive Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. He has done great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, if he's done great things for you, say amen. If God has done great things for you, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has done great things. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. We thank God, amen, for, amen. Our visitors this morning, they're here for the first time. Bless the name of the Lord. I briefly met them this morning. Glory to God. So we're gonna, we're just gonna, you wanna say a little something? Amen. Just stand up and say a little something. Amen. Let's hear what he has to say. Bless God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Love Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. I want you to be welcome here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. Glory to God. Just feel free this morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, when the Spirit of the Lord is there, it's liberty. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, when Jesus set you free. Yes. Ah. No more bondage. No more pain. Glory to God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, we give thanks for the tithes and the offering we receive today. Lord God, we pray that you bless those who had something to give and bless those who didn't have anything to give. And, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, multiply this amount like only you can, that the work might be completed here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. And, Lord God, we pray that as you increase our faith, we are going to increase our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart say amen. amen. God bless you. God bless you.
get ready for prayer and fasting. It's, we started late. I'm not going to give you a Bible study this morning. I'm not preaching this morning. I got the morning off, but God has a, a, a mighty man of God this morning. Amen. We was reading last week about Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place. As Moses wrote, Moses was happy for the orders of the tabernacle. And they were roaming around in the desert. Moses was in Egypt. Moses was herding sheep. Moses was on the run. One time God wanted to kill Moses. So when Moses got a chance to write about God and all that God has done for him, he tried to set the tone and let us know that we need him and it's important to go into your prayer closet. It's important to commune with him. It's important to come into the tabernacle, even Jesus' tabernacle. Look at somebody say, come into the tabernacle. David said in Psalm 27 that the secret place is the tabernacle. So the secret place is not only between you and God. It's a place, location you can go if you're fortunate enough blessed enough to have a church. Put your hands together because we have a place to worship. And then the true worshipers, like he told the woman at the well, the hours come where the true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. I don't care what you look like, what sex you are, what race you are, how short, how tall, how much you weigh. Hallelujah. But are you a true worshiper? Somebody said, my hour has come. My hour has come, and I'm not going to forsake worshiping him. I'm going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what the word is about. The word is about to come. Somebody said, I'm ready for the word. He is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Satan was in the beginning with God. He is the word. Amen. So your hour is here, and it's time to worship him in spirit and in truth, and we'll give you direction on how we'll do corporate fasting. But when you can, we want to encourage you to fast. And Mark and uh, Matthew, this kind, go about, not by, but by fasting. This kind. Amen. Some things that we want God to do for us won't happen unless we dedicate more to him. More to him. Amen. Why would I give you a car if you can't pay for the gas? Amen. Amen. But God wants those to talk to him, to fast, to consecrate ourselves, and set apart, be set apart, so that he uh, can get the glory and that we can move in strength and power. Now, I thank God for the few of you that came out this morning. There wasn't, you weren't worried about the snow. You weren't worried about the cold weather. There's a blessing for you this morning with your name on it. Give God some praise. Amen. Mr. Tiffany White, I thought we over your time this morning. Starting late is not good for her on Sunday. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. The announcements for the week um, this evening there will be prayer tonight at 6 p.m. Uh, Wednesday night, as usual, there's Bible study, and then there's the online pre Bible study um, at 6 30. 6 30. Um, the third installation of Real Men Talk is to be announced, but it's possibly going to be February 4th at 7 p.m. Uh, the theme is still, Where Are You? Leave No Man Behind, and the scripture is Matthew 18, 12. Uh, February 26th, our pastor will be speaking at Abundant Life Church in Kansas City um, for District Elder Bruce Dick's 50-year celebration, and the address for that I have this week is 723 Olive in Kansas City. Thank you, Sister Tiffany White. Amen. Amen. At this point, we are going to have the introduction of the speaker, and I believe the introducer will be making her way back in here shortly, right? Yes. Amen. Amen. We want her to do it, and she'll be right back. All right. So, uh, I thank God that he's brought us a mighty long way, three and a half years of pastoring. I learned a lot. And like a friend, a pastor friend, mentor of mine in Kansas City told me, he said, uh, when he took over, they said, he said, I don't know how to pastor, mother. And he said, don't worry, the people will teach you. <laughs> the people will teach you. 
So I thank God that I've learned a lot and you've taught me. Amen. But most of all, God has given us direction. Given us direction. And it's, we're, we're, we move under the orders of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We move under the orders of the Holy Spirit. While we're waiting for it. She's not, okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, maybe I'll introduce the speaker. And uh, back in the late 90s, maybe the early 2000s, there was a man that came from Pennsylvania and uh, came here to play football. Uh, Brother James White came here to play football, and maybe in the 80s, a man from Chillicothe. I was talking to, I always say Chillicothe because he has family in Chillicothe, from Carrollton, Carrollton, right? And he told me, he said, he said, El, he said, William Hall, he's the first one out there that was kind of like a Bo Jackson. He was super strong and super fast. Amen. <laughs> he was there before him. Well, a man knocked on his door, uh, him and his wife's door, in the early 2000s, I believe, as we was knocking on doors in the community. And he had been called from Louisiana to play basketball years before that at Missouri Western. He knocked on his door. And the rest is history. And God has been blessing him. Uh, he answered the knock, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And years before that, a man from Omaha knocked on Elder Hughes' door. Amen. Or in the form of ran into him at the college. Amen. <laughs> and the rest is history. Baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. Baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with his precious gift of his Holy Ghost. I introduce you here on this morning, Elder William Hall, because uh, he's our speaker, but not only is a speaker, he's our speaker. He has been a big brother to me. He has been a supporter. He has been a minister, a deacon, a teacher, a preacher, an example, and a leader right now to our man in this church. Amen. Put your hands together. We need a man leader. He's traveled all over the world with two or three different types of ministries. And he's seen some things that a lot of us have never seen. Hallelujah. But one thing he's never seen is the righteous forsaken or his seed, begging bread. It gives me great honor to bring to you, let's stand to your feet this morning, our man's leader. Leader of the Lord. Man of God like Moses. Elder William Hall. With an introduction like that from Pastor, you know, this is the hot spot right here. So when you see the smoke, you know there's been some fire. Follow the smoke. Follow the smoke and you're running to some fire. So I'm just thankful to be in this place where I don't take lightly. It's been since about 2019 or 20 since I held the mic and preach the word and I thank God for this opportunity because he could use anybody he could have chose anybody but he laid it upon that man's heart our pastor to allow me to stand in his place this Sunday morning
Yeah. 
back here. Safe, Father. All in one piece, Father. With a mind and an ear to hear what you got to say today, God. So open up our minds and our hearts to what you got to say today. Speak, Lord, in spirit and in truth this morning. Let the power of the Holy Ghost, let the anointing flow through the atmosphere today. Touch and change lives today. Transform and rearrange hearts today, God. Let them leave here never the same again. Because they had an encounter with you here this Sunday morning. So Jesus, we give you praise. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. You can take your seats if you can. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel his presence in this place. If you got your Bibles or your Bible apps and you've gotten so sophisticated, we can find the word on our phones and iPads and all kinds of ways to get to understand and know the Lord, turn to a familiar passage of scripture that pastor has been in and out of and I just felt like the Lord wanted to say a little bit more, hallelujah. Amen. So when he got 12 bullets in, I don't mind using some of them bullets myself and firing off and hallelujah, piggybacking or whatever you want to call it, glory be to God. It's, it's been a while since I've done this, so Bear with me, I'm excited all to be here before you. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Verses 1 through 10, but I'm going to read just a few verses. Then we're going to jump on over to Romans, the 12th chapter. 1 and 2. So you can put your finger in Romans 12, 1 and 2 if you want to. I'll be reading right out of the King James Version, but it, my Bible, it removes a lot of the these and the thou's. It's even read writing in the Old Testament where Jesus was speaking. That's 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 1 through 10, but I'm going to jump around because of time and Throw this out there real fast and real quickly. Thank God for the Chiefs winning yesterday. I'm going to throw that out there. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I didn't watch any of it, but glory be to God. Yes. <laughs> I saw the scores. Hallelujah. Yes. So they're doing all right. Glory to God. Yes. So we thank God for what God is doing in the show me state. Yes. He's showing us some things. And God is up to some new things in my life, hallelujah, and I just want to share a few things. It says here, verse 1, it says, furthermore, you know when somebody starts out and starts out like that, furthermore, they got something they want to say to you. They ain't playing. Paul wasn't playing when he wrote to the churches, hallelujah, in these epistles. When he started out, he said, furthermore, I got some more things to tell the church. Some more things to write in the epistles to speak. I'm keeping this mic here because I know me, I can get excited and want to shake that mic. So I'm trying to stay still, stay right here. Hallelujah. Because I get excited. This, this fire that's in me is something that God put in me. But he said, furthermore, then we beseech you, we beg you, brethren. Some brethren in here. Hallelujah today. Yes. Hallelujah. We were going to have the brother and me last night, but it's coming soon. Hallelujah. And I had God had a word for them, but we just want to make sure that everybody's safe. Yes. Glory to God. They make it back to the house of God. If you can tonight for prayer, but it said, Brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus. Some encouraging words that Paul had to say to the brethren. This includes the sisters too. That as you have received of us how you ought to walk. It's a walking that we have to do every day. If anybody don't know, I'm a male man. I do lots of walking. 
and talking to Jesus while I'm walking. Never thought I'd ever be a mailman walking 50 to 60 miles a week, 200 plus miles a month, over 1,200 something miles a year. I put in the work and I tell you what, my feet feel it every day, but God gives me strength. Day after day to keep on walking. And I ain't walking for me because I do whatever I do. I do wholeheartedly unto the Lord. While I'm walking, I'm praying and thinking about my family of God. My brothers and sisters that are here today and couldn't make it. Prayers go up while I'm walking and blessing houses and touching mail everywhere. So Paul was trying to let them know that how you ought to walk and to please God. So would you abound more and more. There's something about pleasing God. And I had to find a title of some kind. I said to myself, keep reading just a little bit more. And it said here, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. There's instructions, commandments that have been given out to us from the time we were born again and when we got into relationship with Jesus. There's some commandments, there's some instructions that are going out weekly every Wednesday night if you make it on Bible study at 7 o'clock. If you make it out here on Sunday mornings and what you do in your quiet time at home. There's some instructions and there's some commandments that have been given by the Lord Jesus. We want to understand for this is the will of God, verse 3. Yes, Lord. Even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Sanctification, holiness, being set apart. There ought to be a difference about you when people see you in the streets or on your job and in your home, some type of difference about you as being peculiar people. We are, hallelujah, a chosen generation. Yes, we are peculiar people. We are a royal priests too. So we ought to, there ought to be a difference about us. It's a sanctification. We ought to be set apart as believers and unbelievers. There's a great separation and happening right now in the earth. Hallelujah. Yes. I heard some things on Wednesday night. Worked all day and made it through the rain and came out Wednesday night and began to hear about some of that separation. What God is doing between believers and unbelievers. Yes. Hallelujah. For Jesus said to his disciples, just throwing these things out, because scripture comes up in my spirit. It starts welling up in my soul and my gifts get stirred up. So when Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said unto them, Hallelujah. If any man, any man. Mm. a liar, fornicator, wow. adulterer, if any man, a cheater, Hallelujah. If any man, hallelujah, come after me. Yes. Matthew 16 and 24. If any man come after me and deny himself. Peter denied Jesus some three times. Hallelujah. And the cock crowed. So Jesus don't want you, hallelujah, denying him. He wants you to deny yourself. If any man come after me and deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's something about when you deny yourself, sanctification begins to take over. Sanctification begins to have its place and you begin to yield to the spirit and not the flesh. Something about yielding to the spirit of God and not yielding to the carnality and to the flesh. He said sanctification, hallelujah, that you should abstain from fornication. We got children in here, so I'm not going to go too deep in all of that. But you know what I'm talking about when we begin to talk about fornication. Doing things with people before marriage. When God is a jealous God and he wants you to marry him and give your all to him. Yeah. Yes. I 
he piggybacking off of Wednesday night, but he said to love the Lord God with all thy heart. All right. yeah. With all your soul. Yes. With all your mind. In all your strength. Yes. It's just flowing from Wednesday night to glory to God. Yes. It don't keep some for yourself, but he's saying to, if you want to abound more and more, he said these are the instructions. These are some of the commandments, hallelujah, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Possess your vessel. Control your body. Temperance. Fruit of the Spirit. God has been doing a new thing in me, Elder Hughes, Pastor, Bishop, First Lady, Brother Dennis, Brother David, all of y'all, Brother White, hallelujah. Sister Jessica Mann and everybody, Brother Hughes, Sister Hughes, many of you, Brother Marty back there, Sister Cynthia. God has been doing a new thing in me. All right, all right. And I pray for these desires to be removed so I can be more sanctified and be more set apart from what the world, hallelujah, wants to see, hallelujah. And I said, I got to let some of these things go. So when you let it go, hallelujah, you let go, here comes God. He inhabits the praises of his people. I want to make a place habitable for our God. Because my heart wasn't as habitable as I wanted it to be. It had too much of the world in it. So I had to do something different than I did in 2022. I got to do something different for this new season in 2023. How many of you out there want to do a new thing in 2023? And if you want to see, hallelujah, a change in your life. Hallelujah, we're going to keep on reading. Hallelujah, I ain't, I'm just warming up, glory to God. All right. Hallelujah. Jumping down to verse 6, we're going to say that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner, any manner, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forwarded you and testify. For God has not called us to uncleanness, but to holiness. So now that I know the things that I know and have received some revelation, everything in my life is changing for the more and the more. Hallelujah. I'm changing. My house is changing. My marriages is changing. My relationships with friends is changing. My job, things on my job is changing. Hallelujah. And I ask the question, do you want to change? Yeah. Hallelujah. So this is what we're going to keep on reading. Mm -hmm. But it's touching brotherly love. Hallelujah. Let me jump back to verse 8. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God. Rejects, rejects not man, but God. Who has also given to us his Holy Spirit, yes. the Comforter. I help him. Hallelujah. He's here right now helping me, helping you. Glory to God. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write to you. For you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. To love thy neighbor as thyself. To love your enemies. Hallelujah. To love your wives as Christ. Love the church. Hallelujah. I'm so glad my wife made it back here because God is teaching me how to love even more my wife like Christ. Love the church. Glory to God. It takes a special woman to put up with a man like me. A complicated, hallelujah man. But she put up with me some 30 plus years and she's still here and I'm still here. Glory be to God. Fighting the good fight of faith because we are allowing this change to happen in our lives. If you don't talk right, I'm going to tell a little bit about hallelujah, blessed Lee Hallelujah. What we did on Friday night, glory be to God. Hallelujah, Lord, put in my spirit when you get home after coming to the house of God. I was here, hallelujah, on Friday night. 
gluing what I normally do once in a while, a little housekeeping. Because I love the Lord's house. Been doing it for quite some time. Getting back to more of doing things that God has put in my spirit. Pastor remembers walking around and seeing my whole family with trash bags, picking up trash in this place. Because we love to see cleanness. Hallelujah. So, so just wanted to just throw that out there. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's, that's just something about being clean. But God is saying something now in the spirit that I know that is, if he's doing it in me, he can do it in somebody else. If you want change in 2023, let's keep on reading. You're going to find out. Verse 10 says, and indeed, you do it toward all, brethren, which are in all Macedonia. We ain't in Macedonia, we in St. Joseph. Uh -huh. So you got to do this towards all your brothers and sisters here in St. Joseph, Missouri, in the state of Missouri, in this country, hallelujah, around the world. He's oh, going a little bit too fast right there. I almost went in something, but it ain't time for that yet. But he said, indeed, hallelujah. Indeed means in contract. You got an agreement to do it toward all the brethren. This thing has been established and settled in you. Hallelujah. He's speaking to the church. Hallelujah. But we beseech you. He's begging you, brethren, that you increase yes. Yes. more and more. Pastor's been talking about increase. So my topic today is increase more and more. Subtopic is change. But if you need something else, live it to please God. Hallelujah. I gave you three right there. Increasing more and more. Need a change in your life. And living to please God. Who am I pleasing? Glory be to God. Am I pleasing God or am I pleasing me? I'm going to bounce around from Wednesday night to Sunday morning. How am I pleasing God? Hallelujah. I'm throwing some questions out there for you to think about just a little bit. How am I pleasing God? Where am I pleasing God? I want to be more effective this year as children of God. Yep. Do you want to be more effective this year than you were in 2022? Do you want to see a change and do something different in 2023 that you didn't see? Hallelujah, 2022. Hallelujah. You might have wanted some healing for somebody in your family. And you want it now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You want to see something this year? It's time to do some things differently than you did last year. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. So I was thinking about the family of God. Hallelujah. This family. Greater Jesus Tabernacle. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The body of Christ. Hallelujah. It's something about being jointly and fitly together with my brothers and sisters. It's something that my elbow needs and my toe needs and my sister needs and my brother needs. And as we continue to love on one another, we'll understand the needs yes. of one another. Yes. The church, hallelujah, wants to increase more and more and change. But you got to understand some things. It's a mindset. Yes. We got to set our minds fixed on God for the change. Yeah. What needs to change? We got to identify the culture of the church. All right. How do I under identify the culture of the church? Yeah. You got to go into the pros and sometimes the cons. You got to understand what's pro positive and what's negative going around. Yes. We got to talk about all the good, the bad, and the ugly things. Yes. We got to allow the spirit of truth, who is Jesus, to penetrate the womb of the hearts of his people so that change could take place. And it's going to happen when the spirit of truth penetrates the womb of the hearts of the people. 
And next thing you know, hallelujah, they'll be doing some things instead of worrying about themselves. Hallelujah. They'll be doing some things where they'll be more of the salt of the earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. They'll be more like the light that's set upon the hill. Hallelujah. With their families and on the jobs. So my question is, are you preserving your own identity? Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah. He wants you to understand salt is a preserver. And if the soul has lost all of its savor and its power, the Bible says, Jesus said it's good for nothing. But to be trodden upon yes. by the foot of man. Yes. And I know there's some salt here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle that God has been preserving. Amen. That God wants to use in this city and around the world. Yes. Hallelujah. We ought to have more of a global perspective of who God is. Hallelujah. We can't put bounds and limits on God anymore. We got to get outside the four walls of this church and be the church. Hallelujah. Because I know, hallelujah, when I became, hallelujah, with the revelation and understanding of who Jesus is, Jesus went to them. Jesus would walk, hallelujah, and they would find Jesus. Jesus didn't stay in one church and stay in a building and then go nowhere. Stay in the house, sit in a lazy boy and then go nowhere. Right. Jesus came to the people. Yeah. Jesus came to the doors, knocked on the doors. Hallelujah. Came and visited people. Hallelujah. The great physician would come see about you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I, I need somebody to be healed. Jesus might have taken his time sometime, but he showed up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He showed up. Hallelujah. And you know when Jesus shows up, hallelujah, something was going to happen. Because right. Jesus was a trailblazer. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus was radical. Yeah. Jesus was about his. Hallelujah. Jesus was passionate. Hallelujah. I told you earlier, hallelujah, when you follow the smoke, you know there's been some fire. Yeah. I was a mailman, hallelujah, walking just the other day. And I saw some building on fire. I said, wow, look at all the smoke. Hallelujah. There must have been a great fire. Many fire engines were there. I said, so God telling me, you need to follow the smoke if you want to continue to be passionate like Jesus. You need to follow the smoke if you want to be a trailblazer like Jesus. You need to follow, hallelujah, what you're passionate about if you want to be kept on fire. Hallelujah. If you want to follow the smoke, something's going to keep that desire there, hallelujah. It's going to keep the passion there, hallelujah. But you got to understand, you got to find the smoke. You got to look for the smoke, because there's where the smoke is fire. If you ain't looking for the smoke, you'll never be on fire. You'll never get in uh, be like passionate about Jesus in the kingdom of God, about souls, hallelujah. So when Jesus was a trailblazer, hallelujah, I just wanted to just throw that out there. Because I understand something about a revelation and, and I understand something about truth. And one of the byproducts of truth is passion. Uh -huh. Once you get that truth of who Jesus is, yes. uh. mm. <laughs> once you get that truth of who Jesus is in your life, you begin to have better focus, better focus. great focus, magnifying God. Perception changes. Images change. And that's what I've been doing in the last 10 weeks. Glory be to God. Free of television. Free of movies. Free of Netflix and Hulu and thrillers and mysteries. And free of all the stuff that comes through the tube. I've been, I've been free hallelujah, of not indulging and devoting more of my time to having more relationship with God. My, my. No sports of any kind. No Chiefs. No basketball. Oh my goodness. God knows how much I love to watch a game. I played the game. Brother Bo, I understand the game of being a fanatic. Of 
being a fan. And I am not being able to watch how it was running up and down that field and scoring touchdowns time after time and winning the game. I said, my God, you're going to have to take this desire out of my heart. So I looked in the word and he said, if you delight yourself in the law, I will give you the desires of your heart. So I began to delight myself more in God early in the morning. Hallelujah. Getting up. Working out with God in the gym room of faith. Because faith without works is dead being alone. So I know I had to put some work to this faith. And I said, God, you're going to have to do something in my heart. For I know my family loves to watch this. And my wife wants to do these things. But we found more love for each other. We got some board games. And we be playing Trivia pursuit and having fun and laughing and giggling and learning and getting closer because we're not focused on what the perverted world is sending through the television, right. but we've been focusing more on the love of God in our hearts for one another. So I, I, I've been thinking, God, we've been playing these games and talking and communicating and sitting back and doing more spiritual things like Friday night. Left here after housekeeping, got home, God pressed in my spirit. He said, wash your wife's feet. So I got home and I, we had communion with one another. And I began to wash her feet like Jesus did the disciples. Pray over my wife. Pray, hallelujah, Hallelujah, because I know prayer changes things because it's been changing my life. So I continue to pray every morning before I head out to work. Glory be to God. In the gym room of faith. Then I step into the gym and work out and me and Jesus be working it out. I be like, come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Let's get another set. Come on, Jesus. Let's work it out. Come on, Jesus. Because I can do more things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Come on, Jesus. Let's work it out. So we be in the gym, 5 o'clock in the morning. Glory be to God. Working that thing out. Before I go walk 10, 15 miles, I'm walking it out and working it out with Jesus. Because if I don't establish my beginnings in the morning, I set myself up. For destruction that I may not know of, that the enemy is trying to plot down the road. So I start my day like Mother Foster used to tell me. She would hand me papers with scriptures, Mother Cosetta Foster, and it would say scriptures on them. And my first scripture she ever gave me was Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So I started seeking God first in his kingdom. And all these things were added unto me. So I said, God, I thank you. What's happening in my home? I've been tearing down images, building altars. Tearing down images, building altars. Tearing down images, building altars. Pray. Fast and glory to God and see and change. So when you get this revelation, excuse me, and you get this truth, mm -hmm. hallelujah, you get to understand who Jesus is and you begin to silence your distractions. Stuff out there that wants to distract you, to keep you off focus, you begin to silence them distractions. I know this is going to hit hard, but I'm going to tell it anyway, because he said, not me. Love not the world. Right. Neither the things that are in the world. Yeah. What's in the world, huh? There's a whole lot out there that's perverse. That's wicked. Fornicating and adulterous. Yeah. Stealing and doing all kind of men of evil. There's a lot of things that are in the world, but we would rather love the world. 
He told us, love not the world. Yes, yes. Neither. Mm -hmm. Because what's in the world? Nothing but the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. Pride of life. None of that's of the love of the Father. But we keep indulging in it as a church of believers. This is the spirit of truth speaking right now. I walk into my priestlyhood, but then now you step into your prophet, and then you've got to tell the people, hallelujah, the truth. Help us, Jesus, because you told us in Romans, hallelujah, the 12th chapter. And here's Paul begging again, you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, yes, sir. to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Yes. That's talking about some sanctification. Yes. That's talking about holiness. Yes. And holiness without no man shall see the Lord. So he's talking about sanctifying, being set apart, making a difference. Hallelujah. Presenting our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Yes, yes. And be not conformed to this world. And be not conformed to this world. I'm going to turn my back on this one. But be not conformed to the NFL. Be not conformed to the NBA. Be not conformed to the NHL. Be not conformed, hallelujah, to the young and the restless. That's an old soap opera. Be not conformed, hallelujah, to, to talk shows and reality shows. Be not conformed, hallelujah, to Netflix and Hulu. Be not conformed to Cinemax and HBO. Be not conformed, hallelujah. What's coming through the images, hallelujah, of those televisions is so subtle, hallelujah. We got to fight every day, hallelujah, to remain holy, hallelujah. But I give it up that stuff. I took the television out of the bedroom and said, ah, not in my room, hallelujah. I can't have that in here anymore because God is doing something different in my heart. And then he goes on to tell me that we do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's got to be a change somewhere. And that was part of the title, hallelujah. Is anybody looking for a change this year? Hallelujah. I know I need a change in my life because I want to get closer to Jesus. I want to see manifestations of his presence and his power and of his glory everywhere. Hallelujah. I want to see healings. Hallelujah. I want to see salvations and deliverance everywhere. Hallelujah. So you know when these brothers, hallelujah, Paul and the apostles, hallelujah, when they continued in the word, hallelujah, in prayer and fasting, some of these brothers' shadows was healing folks. Hallelujah. Some of these brothers' handkerchiefs was healing folks. My God, because you know they were spending time with Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so, so they weren't conformed to what was happening around the world, but they was transforming Hallelujah. The renewing of the mind, hallelujah. And proving what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So I know when I got the revelation of who Jesus is. And I wanted to silence the distractions. Hallelujah. Have you ever done the opposite of what God asked you to do? Have you ever done the opposite of what God asked you to do? I got in some things. Some several years ago. And God was asking me to do this. And I did like Jonah and did that. I didn't want to go, hallelujah, to Nineveh. I went to Tarshish instead. And did you ever find yourself doing the opposite of what God asked you to do? Wonder why so many struggles are coming up in your life. So many problems coming up in your life. Because you're doing the opposite of what God is asking you to do. You wonder why, hallelujah, you're having so many issues going on, hallelujah, in your heart. Can't sleep at night. Fighting and arguing and bickering and complaining. Because you're doing the opposite of what God asked you to do. But when I made up in my mind, hallelujah, and I got a mindset, hallelujah, to allow the faith that God put inside of me to allow to activate the things that I did in the natural, hallelujah, because I used to be a personal trainer. I used to train folks for 
dollars. Some folks I used to train for sixty dollars an hour, to even up to a hundred dollars an hour, because I didn't play with this thing. Because I understand what it takes to be a champion. I won championships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As a bodybuilder, I was a bodybuilder. Some of y'all don't know this. I'm going to throw this out there. My last bodybuilding show was in 2019. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> y'all didn't know that. But I had to get that out of my spirit. Hallelujah. Because I grew up with physicality in my life. Hallelujah. Being so physical. Hallelujah. Won championships and travel around the world and understand what it takes, hallelujah, to be victorious and a champion. Hallelujah. What it takes to have the discipline. Hallelujah. So when you become a personal trainer, what you do is you help them to be able to do it on their own. Because yes, yes. I ain't going to be there all the time. Uh. Pastor ain't going to be there all the time. Yes. Assistant pastor ain't going to be there all the time. So he's training you up so you're able to do it on your own when something comes up in your own house. You're able to lay hands on your own children. Hallelujah. So they can recover from sickness and disease. Hallelujah. By faith, he's trying to train us up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like a father's supposed to train up his children in the way they should go. So when they get old, they won't depart. Hallelujah. So these are the things that a personal trainer is trying to do. Hallelujah. As myself. I was trying to instruct my people how to be more disciplined. Amen. We got to be more disciplined. Yes. We got to be more consistent. All right. We got to have more commitment, yes. more zeal, more passion, and more love and effort and put in the hard work. Hallelujah. And have that desire. These kind of things. Some people, when you're training folks, all they want to know is, what should I eat? It ain't about that right now. You got to identify what you want, who you want to look like. Identify yourself first before you get to the doing and the what it, putting the stuff inside. Because that, that is the easier part once you identify who you want to be. That's right. Mm. When you identify who you want to be, you'll get your mind off the stuff you got to put inside. Because you know who you are. Oh, I want to look like this. I want to feel like this. I want to know that it takes this to be that kind of man or woman of God. So so, so, so we got to identify some things. And these are some of the things. There's eight things that I just put down. And if you want to write them down or put them in your mind or whatever, hallelujah. Because you want to be able to help yourself when nobody's around. Yes. When there's no pastors around, no elders and no ministers. You want to be able to search the scriptures and find them. So you got to create some spiritual habits. What are you doing, hallelujah, to create spiritual habits? Yeah. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you studying your word, coming out on Wednesday nights? And whenever the church doors are open on Sunday nights, are, are you creating some spiritual habits? Devoting some time with Jesus. Yeah. Once you understand who Jesus is, I, 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 I just can't take my mind off of him. The revelation of who he is because when I found out here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle who Jesus was, All right. my soul got set on fire. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 we're going to do something real quickly because, see, some folks need some revelation and some understanding of who Jesus is. Somebody might need to know who this master is. Who the Savior is. Hallelujah. So I'm going to do something real quickly. Glory be to God. And if, if you just bear with me for a second. Because, because sometimes we, 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 we hear about his name. But we really don't understand how we ought to use this name. How we ought to, hallelujah, walk in his name. Live and move and have our being in his name. Brother James, I need you for a second. Come on up here. Hallelujah. Brother David, come on up here for a second. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I like, I like, yeah. If you didn't know I was a motivational speaker for the power team for some six years, we use folks out of the audience. Hallelujah. Illustrations. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Because, because he said in his word, hallelujah, as we went out, glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
He said he would send them out. Glory be to God. And when he sent them out, glory be to God. He said, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. I didn't see nothing plural in that right there. I just saw singular in the name. Hallelujah. We're doing a doctrinal lesson real quickly. This is the doctrinal lesson. Hallelujah. So he said, in the name, it was nothing plural but singular. In the name of the Father. Hallelujah. So I write down right here. I put Father on this check. Glory be to God. And he said then, in, in, in the Son, I put Son on this check. Hallelujah. And then he said, in, in the Holy Ghost, I put Holy Ghost on this check. Glory be to God. And I put a million dollars in these envelopes. Glory be to God. And pastor, hallelujah, is the bank. Glory be to God. And I'm going to ask these brothers to go to the bank to cash this million dollars. Glory be to God. Take this to the bank over there to cash the check. Hallelujah. When he takes the check to the bank teller, hallelujah, the bank teller tells the man, hallelujah, you can't cash this check because it's in a title, not in a name. So he said, take it back, hallelujah, to the man, hallelujah. Then the next man takes another one check for a million dollars to the bank teller, hallelujah. And he said, I want to cash this million dollars, hallelujah. Can I cash this million dollars? And he says, no, it's not in a name, it's in a title. You can't cash a title. And then he brought this other one and took another million dollars to the bank teller. And the bank teller looked at it and said, it's a million dollars, and it says Holy Ghost, but you can't cash it unless there's a name on it. Hallelujah. So I'm there to let you know, hallelujah, if you don't have it done in the name of Jesus, thank you, brothers, glory be to God. If you don't do it in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, you can't do it in titles, glory be to God. You can't do it in titles. You can't do it. I'm a father. Hallelujah. That's a title. I'm a son. That's a title. I'm a child. That's a title. But if you want to get something done, you got to do it in the name. Hallelujah. And that name is Jesus. That name is Jesus. Baptize them in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of the Father. Not in the name of the Son. Not in the name of the Holy Ghost. He wants you to speak the name. If you want healing in your body, you got to speak the name. If you want deliverance in your house, you got to speak the name. You got to call out Jesus. If you want marriages to be mended, you got to do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you want that son and daughter, hallelujah, off drugs, hallelujah, you got to do it in the name of Jesus. So when I got that revelation, hallelujah, that it was in his name, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I command you, and Lord, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. He told me, hallelujah, there's no other name like the name of Jesus. Don't let wickedness come up before Jesus. Hallelujah, that's number two. Hallelujah, after you created some spiritual habits, don't let wickedness come up before Jesus. So I had to cancel out some stuff, because I didn't want that stuff to affect Hallelujah, my relationship with God. So I spend time with Jesus for some spiritual growth, for some spirit of truth and revelation because I don't put bounds on God. I want God to be boundless in my life. Hallelujah, I don't want any limits that God wants to use me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They sing a song, no boundaries, no limits. From everlasting to everlasting is his love. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. What helps me is we were out there shoveling the snow this morning. Hallelujah. And it's something that I understand that fulfills the, my heart and that servitude. When I'm serving God, that's so fulfilling to me. When I'm out here, hallelujah, cleaning up around the church. When I'm outside shoveling snow with the pastor, with my brother David, or whosoever, it's fulfilling because servitude will fulfill, hallelujah, the calling in your life. Hallelujah. I, I had to get some 
hallelujah, some, some brotherly love out there shoveling snow. Pastor asked me, he said, what you doing out here? You got to preach. I said, I'm shoveling snow, Pastor. This is preaching. Hallelujah, because this is how I live. This is how I move. This is who I have my being in. I'm shoveling snow, not for me, but this is the Lord's house. So when I do things, I do it unto the Lord. That's a fulfilling lifestyle, servitude. You got to be more committed and consistent. And I'll tell you what, it'll get contagious. Hallelujah. I got freedom from my distractions. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. So I'm going to continue building altars and tearing down images. No more. He's redeeming the times in my life. Hallelujah. And I tell you what. Thank you. Excuse me. Hallelujah. That's from walking out there in the snow every day. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. This thing that we were doing here. Hallelujah. Spiritual exchange. Yes. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? The world. Lose his soul. Yeah. You get some spiritual exchange when you take on his name. Amen. Because when God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So when he gave much, much is required. Yes. He gave everything when he gave himself. When much is given, much is required. Is there some strongholds in your life and your family that need to be broken? I know it needed to be broken in mine. Lust of the flesh. The flesh is carnivorous. It's hungry. It desires to be fed. My flesh wanted to be fed. Man born of a woman is full of My flesh wanted to be fed by all the stuff that I was watching, whether it was good or bad, and wanted to be fed because, hallelujah, I was, remember, when I was about three years old, the first time they put me in front of a television, and they wanted the TV to be my babysitter. And I've been, been, been ever since, till last year, October 13th, I had to put away them childish things because when I became a man, See, that's what happens. It's called maturity. Perfecting one another. You got to change something. There's got to, some things got to change. And so what happened was a spiritual exchange when I said, here I'm going to give you this, Jesus, and I'm going to give you that. He gave me the desire to remove it. I have no taste, no desire. But when I was a little boy from three, they put me in front of Sesame Street to see, hallelujah, Big Bird and Snuffleupagus and all of these things. I don't forget all of that stuff. He, man, I got the power. <laughs> Thundercats, oh, and all of that. I remember all them things. It put me in front of the TV. It became my babysitter. Well, Because they didn't want to spend time with me. They didn't want to read with me. They didn't want to share the good news with me. So they plopped it down in front of a television and want you to just watch this and watch that. And before you know it, you just get so overwhelmed and overcome with so much of that filth and so much that's happening. And now we got telephones and, and, and I got to ask the Lord to monitor this thing in my hand because stuff pops up hallelujah, on the phone and, and I got to put it down and say, I can't deal with that. Hallelujah. Because it, it, it can be more dangerous than the television. Because of social media today for children bullying one another and Hallelujah. And they, 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 I just was seeing things happen in the children like never before because of the, this thing right here. They get them in elementary school. I'm telling you the truth. My wife's an elementary teacher. And they get to watch and see all kinds of things that are happening on those phones. So I had to understand that God is a spirit. Yes. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in Truth. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will. It should be done unto you. I said, God, I need more self-control, more temperance. He said, okay, then do what your pastor been talking about. I said, okay, Lord. Then he said, well, what should a man give in exchange for his soul? So I said, all right, I'm exchanging this for that. He's giving me the power.
power to overcome. Hallelujah. Yes. And a heart that dwells in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. All right. Church hurt, folks. Mm. I've been church hurt. But a heart that dwells in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. They're going to let dwell again. He that dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you want to dwell in the secret place? Because if you're dwelling in the secret place, forgiveness is in the secret place. Grace is in the secret place. Peace is in the secret place. Joy is in the secret place. Love is in the secret place. Jesus is in the secret place. Self-control is in the secret right. place. Your patience you're asking for, you need. With your husband, your spouse, your wife, your children, your co-workers. It's in the secret place. Everything is in the secret place. So I said, okay, Jesus, wrapping this thing up now, we've exchanged some stuff. Things are getting better. Amen. But that don't mean I've arrived. It just got better. It just got better. I ain't there yet. Hallelujah. That's why I sing the song that I sang. I will trust him. Hallelujah. Till I die. Hallelujah. That's why I sang the other song. Hallelujah. Near the cross. Glory to God. Because that's why I got to stay. If any man take up his cross, you got to deny these things in your life. You got to get rid of some stuff. If you want to follow Jesus. And I sing my medley every day how I need him. I don't need me. I don't need this world. I ain't from this world. That's why he told me not to be conformed to this world. Right. I'm going back to him. Hallelujah. To get up out of this world. Yeah. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. So he said, well, what, what do the people of God need to exchange? Hallelujah. Because I used to travel the world and my wife and my children know I'd be in Africa and I'd bring home African money. I'd be in uh, Israel and I'd bring home shekels. Hallelujah. I'd be in uh, Japan and I'd bring home the yen. I'd be in England and I'd bring home the pound. And I bring all this different money from around the world and give it to my children. And I, they, they say, we can't do nothing with this. We can't do nothing with this here in the United States. Hallelujah. I said, well, you know what you can do? You can go to a, a currency exchange. And you can get with your money for the U.S. States, United States currency. And you can get an exchange, make your transaction, and you can spend the money here. I know the money looks like Monopoly money. It don't look real. But it's worth something in other parts of the world. Lives are worth something in other parts of the world. God wants us to have a global perspective on how we have to understand our brothers and sisters in China, in the Ukraine, in Africa, and around the world, in Israel, Jerusalem, hallelujah, they have got to exchange the same thing that we got to exchange. Yes. What you got to exchange? You got to exchange your life. Your life for his life. So I said, okay, God, you mean to tell me Jesus died on the cross? You read the scripture this morning. Hallelujah. What kind of man of love was that when he stretched himself wide? Hallelujah. So we can understand the breadth and the width and the height and the depth. That's the sign of the cross. Hallelujah. Of his love. The breadth. The width and the height and the depth. That was the cross. So Jesus wants you to take your cross and follow him. Those are the burdens you talked about on Wednesday night. Some of the sinful things. We don't want to put, hallelujah, and carry up on a cross. Our burdens. But Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Hallelujah. So we got to take up this cross. It may not feel good. Hallelujah. It hurts right now. Hallelujah. Stuff is going on in my life that I can't even discuss with my best friend. Stuff going on in my life I can't discuss with my spouse. All I can do is talk to Jesus about it. Have you ever been in a place in your life, hallelujah, when you was, hallelujah, here, but you wasn't present. You was there at home, but you wasn't present. Because so much was happening in your life, hallelujah. You were fighting on your job. You were fighting, hallelujah, in your mind. How you ought 
to live. But Jesus is saying right now, hallelujah, you got to exchange some stuff. Hallelujah. Because this currency called love, hallelujah, he did it once. He's not going to do it again. He died once. He was buried and rose from the grave. So you can understand his love for you. Hallelujah. That while you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Hallelujah. He demonstrated his love for us. Hallelujah. But are you going to continue in sin that Christ may abound? Hallelujah. God forbid. Hallelujah. Jesus is wanting you to understand something. In this exchange, hallelujah, you got to change. In this exchange for his love, you got to change. For in this exchange, you got to change for his peace. For this exchange, you want more faith, you got to exchange. Hallelujah. Hey, get rid of all this warring in your mind, warring in your soul. Hallelujah. We are triune beings. Hallelujah. We live in a body. Hallelujah. It has a soul. Hallelujah. And the spirit. Hallelujah. We are triune beings. So we got to understand in your soul. Hallelujah. You're warring. Hallelujah. In your emotions. You're warring with your will in his will. In your soul. You're warring. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With everything pertaining with knowledge and intellect. Because knowledge is puffed up. Hallelujah. But it's love that edifies. Hallelujah. So we got to give up and exchange what we know to what he know and who he is. Who's our mission, all knowing, all powerful, omnipotent, and omnipresent here and everywhere at the same time. We got to exchange some things. So in the spiritual exchange, If you want to increase more and more, yes, if you want to please God, I gave you enough here today to understand in this transaction, I'm asking everybody to stand to their feet. There's a transaction, hallelujah. We make deposits and we make withdrawals. Are you going to deposit? The same old stuff with no change. Are you going to change this year and say, God, I got to give up this so I can have more of who you are? Yes, because I know it's in your name, Jesus. Where all the power lies, where all the victory is. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. So, if there be anybody, hallelujah, that want to know more about this increase, how fulfilling it is to be born again. This is the truth of the matter, is you must be. Yes. There's no, there's no question of if, ands, or buts about it. You must be born again. Born of the water and of the spirit. Babies cry out. I got a grandbaby, a new grandbaby. His name is Solomon. And when he cried out, hallelujah. He let the world know I'm here. He lets the people understand when there's something going on with him. He'll shout and cry and let you know, I need help. He'll cry and let you know. So when we're born again, there's a cry. There's a shout. There's a, there's a sound, hallelujah, that comes forth from out of your being. Some of us may have never experienced that cry, that shout, hallelujah, that prayer, hallelujah, that, that language, that heavenly language, hallelujah, never experienced, hallelujah, speaking in tongues, hallelujah. Some of us never experienced, hallelujah, talking to God in such a manner that was just so wonderful, hallelujah. Probably can't even understand it all, but when he changed my language and I began to talk to God, hallelujah, and praying in the spirit, hallelujah, and I began to let him know, hallelujah, how I was feeling. And we were communicating, spirit, bearing witness with my spirit, hallelujah. We were talking to one another. There's something about being born of the one and of the spirit, going down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Going down, hallelujah, and being buried, hallelujah, in them sins. Being buried, hallelujah, in baptism. 
Hallelujah. Repenting of your sins. Glory be to God. Changing your way. Hallelujah. Not going back to the things that you did in 2022. But you want to move on and increase the more and more. Hallelujah. There's something, hallelujah, about when you want to allow God to be pleased. Please God. Let's please God this year. Let's increase the more this year. Let's change this year. If there be any one of you that wants prayer today, this is between you and God. Come on down here to the altar. This is between you and God. Nobody else don't worry about who you came here with. This is between you and God. You need something changed in your life this year so you're not going to be affected by it. You want your land to be greater than your former year, 2022. You want 2023 to be better than last year. Come on down and receive the spiritual exchange from God. Give it to 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 God. Exchange your life for his life. You need more wisdom. Come on down. We can pray with you. Hallelujah. If two of us agree on anything here, touch it and agree and hear on anything on earth, ask him the Father in Jesus' name that should be done with him. Come on down and receive. Hallelujah. Somebody needs the Holy Ghost. Somebody has never experienced the Holy Ghost. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. You never even heard of such Holy Ghost. He's trying to let you know it's available. It's freely given and freely received. So if you want more of God, come on down, hallelujah. Get what you can this year, right now. I'm thankful, hallelujah.
We ask everybody to stand if that's all right. Thank God for Pastor allowing me to stand in his place today. God bless you, Pastor. What a privilege and an honor it is. It's been a long time. Getting back on the saddle and allowing the ox to do what he does. <laughs> Keep on treading out that car. Not giving up the fight. So thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for this day. Jesus from the dead. 
We have your same spirit. Lord, tonight, I pray that the spirit baptize us. Today, I pray this week that the spirit baptize each and every one of us. And that we even might speak in tongues as the spirit God give other utterance. I thank you for what you've done. What you're doing right now is making us perfect before you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Thank you, Lord. Protect those driving today in the inclement weather. Touch them. Keep them. Lord, protect their hearts. Protect the sick. Protect the people that are bereaved going through a loss, Lord. Let them know you're with them, Lord. Let them know this is a short life, but we might be made whole through your the salvation that you brought us, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Lord, we pray a spirit of, a special spirit of joy and love as we dismiss. Shake hands, hug somebody, be friendly, or give them a fist pound. Amen. But thank you for coming out. God had you come exactly where you were supposed to be this morning. Amen? Amen. You, you may be dismissed.